Hey, Cody Rowell coming to you from a cold and dark Alaska night. Tonight, I wanted to talk about the Northern Lights. A lot of times when people find out that I'm from Alaska, they'll ask about the Northern Lights. Now, another name for the Northern Lights is the Aurora Borealis. Um, unfortunately, there's not any Aurora Borealis out tonight. Uh, it's not in the Northern Lights forecast. I have seen them in Anchorage before, and when I've seen them in the past, it's more of a green hue that's up over the mountaintops. Sometimes it'll shimmer a little bit, but not much more than that. But definitely the best Northern Lights that I've ever seen was when I was 13 years old and moose hunting with my dad and my grandpa up in the northernmost mountain range of Alaska, the Brooks Range. Now we were moose hunting in the Brooks Range and we were actually, it was a raft trip. We were rafting down a river called the Wild River that empties into the Yukon River. And uh, we had been moose hunting for several days hadn't got a moose yet and decided to pull over one night on a riverbank to camp for the night. Uh, so as we were setting up our tent and heating up some stew for the night, I noticed some green hue that was coming up over the mountains. And I thought, oh, this is awesome. Maybe I'll see some northern lights tonight. Didn't really think anything past that because I had seen it before in Anchorage. But over the next half hour, it really changed into something that I had not seen before at all. There was reds and blues and pinks that were coming up over the mountaintops. Some colors, again, that I hadn't seen before. And over the next hour, uh, evolved into this river of light that was going up over our heads. We basically set up lawn chairs and just watched for hours. My neck just got sore because I was just looking up at this river of light that was going up over me. Uh, it was almost just supernatural to see. Really, the hairs on the back of my neck were just standing straight up. At one point, a beaver slapped its tail in the water and I literally jumped out of my seat just because I was so on edge just watching this phenomena happen in front of me. So what are the Northern Lights? Well, science hasn't really figured it all out yet. What we do know is that uh, the sun has very, very hot temperatures at its surface and it throws out uh, free electrons and charged ion particles in the form of plasma from its surface and these travel to the earth uh, through space. Now the earth has a huge magnetic field around it and when those particles encounter the field they accelerate. Then they hit air particles in the atmosphere of the earth and basically cause them to gain energy and then lose it really quickly emitting light. And that's the light that we see with the Northern Lights. That's that neon and sometimes red and pink and blue colors that we can see come up out of the Northern Lights. And a lot of it is still a mystery, which is sort of the idea of this video. In my previous videos, I talked about the Korzybski sense of gaining knowledge through voracious reading. I also talked a lot about action, taking action and being your own scientist and trying to verify what you've read in order to apply it to your own everyday life. And this video is more about having humility and realizing that there's so much that has gone unexplained so far by science and to um, be able to be okay with that. Um, I think part of being a leader is accepting that there's a lot that you don't know and you need to keep going forward uh, despite that. That's the way science kind of works. It's sort of a leapfrog effect. People throw out a theory uh, out into the nothingness and that theory is later tried to be verified by science, by accumulating evidence. And it's almost like staring into a dark night where you can't really see anything. And then a piece of evidence lights up a bit of it. And perhaps a part that was a little bit fuzzy becomes more illuminated, it becomes more crisp and clear and you understand it better but other parts that were so dark that you couldn't even see them become fuzzy and you have more questions. And that's sort of how science works. You're peering in the dark night, illuminating some areas, but then dimly litting other areas that you didn't even know existed yet, eliciting more questions. And it's sort of this leapfrog effect that keeps happening. And part of that gets me wondering why people get bored sometimes. Uh, it's amazing to me to be able to watch the progression of the accumulation of knowledge in science, uh, figuring out new things and developing new technologies. And it's all just so exciting to me. And I think that people can really harness that if they look hard enough. If they find their own individual niches and get excited and 
energized about it, about investigating the mysteries of the world, if you will. Um, so that's all I had for you tonight uh, for New Mavericks. Be sure to check out my other videos coming up soon. Thanks. Bye. We have a chance to improve the lives of not just millions, but billions of people on this planet through the research that's done in this brain initiative alone. We must love them. We must help them. We must serve them because our whole success will depend on our ability to do these things. <laughs> Ha ha ha. You like fractals? That's cool. We're gonna break the barrier. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! A little doggy. Wee. I have friends. <laughs> There's a raven flying overhead.